Benvenuti scholars, you're here because you're doing a qualitative descriptive study and you need help figuring out how to write your research questions. You're in the right place. I'm Dr. Marquette and this channel is all about helping you get to graduation. First, you need to decide whether your study will be theory driven or theory guided. In most cases, a theory driven study ends up being deductive in nature using deductive reasoning in the analysis while theory-guided studies tend to be inductive in their reasoning. This is an important distinction, and what you decide will determine how you need to write your research questions. So let's do a quick refresher on inductive and deductive reasoning first. Deductive reasoning means that you start with a premise, in your case, a specific theory, and then the analysis is a top-down approach. In other words, you will code your interviews specifically with three or four known elements of that theory in mind. On the other hand, inductive reasoning means that you will code your interviews, focus groups, or whatever you are intending as data using a bottom-up approach. This means that you will analyze your data, and in most cases, that means code your interview transcripts with a much broader mindset. With inductive reasoning, you will determine codes and create themes based on what presents itself without having preconceived notions. Essentially, you will let the codes bubble up more organically rather than what deductive reasoning allows. Again, a study that is theory driven tends to use deductive reasoning. If you want to learn how to create research questions for this type of study, I cover four different types of qualitative studies in this video and will show you step by step how to create those research questions. A study that is theory guided uses inductive reasoning most of the time is not as tightly tied to the theory during the data analysis. I'm going to use a current doctoral student study to show you how to do that in this video. Thanks to Charles McPhee, who allowed us to use his study as an example for this video. Every study must have a theoretical foundation, and Charles knew that he wanted to use Bandura's theory of self-efficacy, and he knew that Bandura included four elements in that theory. Performance accomplishment, vicarious learning, verbal encouragement, and emotional states. Charles's first draft of research questions sounded like this. How do general K through eight teachers describe their performance accomplishment as it pertains to implementing IEPs and teaching students with disabilities in an inclusive elementary classroom? Notice that in this RQ, he mentions Bandura's element specifically, performance accomplishment. He had three more RQs that mimic this one with the only difference being that the other elements took the place of performance accomplishment. This is an example of a theory driven RQ which necessitates deductive reasoning. There's nothing wrong with this type of study, but he realized that in the data analysis, he would only be looking for mentions of anything related to performance accomplishment. There would be less room for emergent themes to bubble up in this type of analysis. That's not exactly what Charles wanted to do, so he decided that a theory guided study with inductive reasoning made more sense for him. While Bandura's theory guided his study, what he really wanted to know, what he really wanted his participants to talk about was about IEP implementation in an inclusive classroom and what supports are needed to make that happen. Will those topics touch on Bandura's four elements of self-efficacy? Well, of course. But using inductive reasoning and analysis, Charles will not be limited to only those four elements. Instead, if something else bubbles up from the transcripts, he'll be free to code inductively and report on ideas outside of Bandura's theory. However, he does expect those elements to be present in his study, but this leaves room for other things to arise in his data analysis. Here are his theory guided research questions that allow for inductive reasoning. Research question one, how do general education K through six teachers describe their ability to implement student IEPs in their classroom? Research question two, how do general education K through six teachers describe the additional supports needed for effective implementation of student IEPs in their classroom? Notice that Bandura's four elements are not specifically mentioned in these two questions. I think it's important to note that these research questions leave it open to not only discover if Bandura's theory is present in these perceptions or descriptions, 
This allows us to explore what is, as opposed to whether or not Bandura's theory is at play here. So now let's bring it together so you can see how this aligns with this problem statement and purpose statement. His problem statement is, it is not known how general K-6 through teachers describe their ability to implement student IEPs in their classrooms and the supports needed for effective implementation of IEPs. I learned this from my colleague, Dr. Derek Tenniel. And when we teach this in person, we like to ask, who's your who and what's your what? So in this case, the who are general K-6 through teachers. And then again, we ask, what is your what? And in this case, there are two what's, their ability to implement student IEPs in their classroom and the supports needed for effective implementation of IEPs. Next, what are they asking the who's to do? Describe. Altogether, the problem statement is, it is not known how general K-6 through teachers describe their ability to implement student IEPs in their classrooms and the supports needed for effective implementation of IEPs. Now, let's look at the purpose statement. His purpose statement is, the purpose of this qualitative descriptive study is to explore how general K-6 through teachers describe their ability to implement student IEPs in their classrooms and the supports needed for effective implementation of IEPs in Ohio. I want you to notice something very specific called alignment. Here, the wording from the problem statement is exactly the same in the purpose statement as it was in the research questions. We just add the purpose of this qualitative descriptive study is to explore in the front and where, in this case, which is Ohio, at the end. Otherwise, the problem and the purpose statements are nearly the same verbatim because the purpose statement is the method plus the design plus the problem plus the sample plus the location. I hope this quick overview of how to align a qualitative descriptive study was helpful. Let me help you get to graduation. Charles, first draft of research. Charles is. Charles is. Charles, first draft of research question sounded like this. It's Charles is. It's Charles is. Because it's, it's possessive. Right. Charles is. Charles is. Sounds odd. Charles is. <laughs> Oh no, <laughs> don't put that in there. <laughs> I always pay for this. Is there anything else you want to say? I really want you to graduate. <laughs> <laughs>